For several decades now, public service employees have been contributing to a pension scheme that offers value-added services like the microfinance and home ownership scheme. A pension scheme that guarantees a quality life and a secured future for members and their dependents after retirement. Committed to providing quality service through its nationwide presence. There is only one such pension scheme for public service employees. Public Service Pensions Fund, PSPF, keeping the pension promise. It's the 3rd of October 2023. Welcome to Grand News. You're watching us live on Topster Channel 89, DTT, and 543 on DTH. We are also live on Star Times application and Facebook. Remember that you can send your letter to the president that you can either send via WhatsApp or text message to the number 0979-958392 and avoid vulgar language. Today's headlines. Poor family planning blamed for stretched resources. Milimil smuggling surface in the Lira. Electric vehicle task removal excites energy companies. Sixteen year old boxer killed by step. To present the news in detail, my name is Tandiwe Banda Kavaso. An expert in family planning in Zambia, Mary Zulu, says lack of proper family planning for members is the reason for an unbalanced enjoyment of national resources. Zambia's population continues to rise with the current statistics, standing at over 19 million people. However, poverty levels in Zambia now stand at 60%. Ms. Zulu says lack of farming is... Family planning, especially amongst rural women, is contributing to lack of balanced resources, such as education and health, which has led to increased poverty levels. In his budget speech made on Friday last week, Finance Minister Stumeko Musokotwane said government will measure poverty levels and living conditions of people at constituency level through sub-national analysis to reduce poverty and inequality in order to integrate population variables in its population and development planning. According to the United Nations report published in February last year, millions of people around the globe, mostly low-income and lower-income countries such as Zambia, lack access to information and services needed to determine whether and when to have children. It has been found that women with higher levels of education tend to have greater autonomy to make decisions compared to less educated women in the same country. In Zambia, experts are saying population growth may be a major contributor to resource depletion as Zambia's population may not balance with the available resources such as land for those in agriculture, medicines and access to education. A family has got fewer children, just as I've said. Those children will be given enough food. It's the government, like the, the way in town, we don't we don't have maize. We buy many meal for the for the government. It will have enough resources to produce food that the that the country can eat. The government also can have. A lot of amenities, the government can have enough schools, they can have enough recreation services for the children, even in the villages, the same 
because it's the same government that is giving all those things. While it can do more to enhance planning by providing services for the uneducated women in homes, the government of Zambia is aware of the increased poverty levels, especially among rural households, and now wants to integrate population variables in its development planning by undertaking subnational analysis and carrying capacity assessment for all districts to establish poverty levels and living conditions at constituency level. Government will conduct carrying out capacity assessment for each district and constituency to establish the ability to deliver public service effectively and efficiently. Zambia's population stands at over 19 million and will continue to rise. Whether or not we know these numbers does not matter. What matters is what we do with these numbers. But all this starts at family level. Christine Mapani, Crown TV News. Despite some Zambians complaining about scarcity of millimil acts of smuggling the commodity into the neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo DRC have resurfaced in Mofalira on the copper belts and truck laden with over 200 of 25 kg bags of millimil have been impounded. I let members of the community in Minabe have taken it upon themselves and cornered two trucks en route to the Congo DRC. And Muflira Mayor Tenali Kamanga has expressed disappointment with the manner in which ZNS officers are operating in the district. Mr. Kamanga has charged that the conduct by ZNS officers is putting the district at risk, especially when the country is grappling with high prices of millimil. Acts of massive millimil smuggling into the neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo DRC have resurfaced in Muflira Copper Belt province. <coughs> And trucks laden with over 200 bags of millimil have been impounded so far. Alert members of the community in Minambe took it upon themselves and cornered two trucks en route to Congo. This happened in the early hours of today after a team of community members noticed lapses and illegalities at the Zambia National Service ZNS manned checkpoint in Mufulela. Some community members alleged that apart from the two intercepted trucks, 10 were seen passing through the ZNS checkpoint scotch free. We feel pain. To see every day trucks and cheaper trucks like the the one we have seen there is part of who? the same vehicles. Issue of like ten pound one cheaper truck and the country. Shows you say even in the Mayaba is passing there is a lot of nearly so we are not feeling good. The best way is to remove that checkpoint and put on the border side so that they can manage to control very well. Meanwhile, Mufila Municipal Council Mayor Tanael Kamanga has expressed disappointments in the manner ZNS officers are operating in the district. The people came to us and told us that there are a lot of drugs that are going into the Congo Diara. The time that we are notified, it was a time that uh, certain uh, vehicles had started off. We did inform the police, I think in Mukambo, who actually did nothing. But because of the vigilant people from the community, they were able to at least get this track as you see it, which passed through Zambia National Service very unfortunate and uh, for now i'm sure we are going to actually leave everything in the hands of the police mr kamanga lamented that the conduct by some zns officers is putting the district at risk especially when the country is grappling with high prices of millimil the zns help us but it has been like we've been hammering on death ears how can more than 10 trucks pass through your checkpoint my suggestion, I think, would be as well that uh, that checkpoint is removed. It's not serving any purpose. The people of Minambe, the people of Morondo, the people of Mukambo chose UPND so that we may bring down these things. But you discover now that whatever is happening, these are the people actually that are even encouraging smugglers. Where on earth? And I will say this, have you ever seen Zambia National Service arrest any smuggler? 
it will only come from someone who maybe could be a whistleblower. Two tracks are at Mufura Central Police Station. Anton Chomba, Ground TV News, Mufurira, Kopabewa Province. Now we did speak to a Copper Belt correspondent, Anthony Chomba, who shares notes with us on why smuggling of millimil has resurfaced. Thank you so much. Uh, acts of smuggling have uh, resurfaced in Mufurira on the Copper Belt, this time with a bang. Uh, previously, government had put in some intervention to keep the trend and uh, security wings to that effect were involved to see to it that smuggling of millimil, which is our staple food here in Zambia, is curbed completely. But what we are seeing now is a different ball game because the practice has now resurfaced. So what happened here in Mufira on the Copper Belt is that uh, members of the community themselves in Mufira's Minambe area took it upon themselves to contain this issue of smuggling. What happened is that uh, two trucks were heading into the Democratic Republic of Congo and laden with about uh, 200 bags of millimil. So it's at this point that members of the public pounced on the said vehicles and impounded them. Why did they do this? They were accused the ZNS officers of being uh, not so serious or uh, exhibiting a laissez-faire attitude towards this issue of containing smuggling here in Mufira on the Copper Belt. Now, out of two trucks that were impounded, uh, 10 were conspicuously seen going scotch free into the Democratic Republic of Congo. But just how, how would one imagine how many bags are going beyond the borders per day? It's a question that begs a lot of answers. And the other thing that is worth noting is that um, the smugglers have also opened up illegal routes to find entry into the Democratic Republic of Congo and uh, security wings uh, were deployed at strategic points by government uh, some four months ago. It's at that point that we saw a decline in uh, cases of smuggling of medium into the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, so it's a quite dicey situation that we are witnessing here in Mufira on the Copper Belt because uh, one one would also bring up an issue of uh, Zambia having uh, or recording high minimum prices. One would be interested to know that this is happening under a very, very critical situation when the country is recording uh, high minimum prices. Now the demand again into the Democratic of Congo for the same commodity has started. And uh, it's worth noting that one bag of minimum in the Democratic Republic of Congo is fetching as a, a high as a 550 kwacha. So these are the points that one should know that uh, uh, when Mirimil is taking that side, how much is it costing? Why are the Congolese now still uh, uh, fetching the commodity from Zambia despite it being uh, expensive? So we will keep you posted regarding this same issue because uh, it's like now uh, smuggling has come back here on the copper belt and uh, the smugglers have employed various ways of, uh, of transporting the commodity into the Democratic Republic of Congo. My name is Antoine Chomba. Have a lovely evening. Thank you so much to our reporter today, Anthony Chomba, for enlightening us on the current situation. Moving on to our next story, wife to one of the Mboroma accident survivors who is currently admitted at the University Teaching Hospital, UTH, has narrated to Crown TV News how she's failing to fend for her family. Mary Musonda said her admitted husband was the provider and the fact that he is not around has made the life hard. She added that she has not received any form of support from government like others have. Meanwhile, Mukushi District DMMU coordinator said once paperwork is complete by the family of the survivor will be issued with a check and they will be issued with funds to help and enable them manage the patient. Details in this report. 
She was spotted at Mkoshi District Administration trying to submit paperwork in order to receive a 5,000 kwacha government promised through DMMU to the Mboroma accident survivors and families of those who died. Mary Musonda explained that life has become hard for her from the time her husband got involved in the Mboroma accident which claimed over 33 lives on September 3, 2023. <laughs> Police reporting at the hospital got to remember for a time out Kareta Kuno, Ovaka to Pirami, but at the same time. Like in a Fidavari, a Fidisha governor to Wunga to Mishtunshi Tavan Pirami. And her father in law also confirmed that no help has come forth to her son's family. Remember, the Manapati Chakosa, if you can find any way of Wunga to Afida. But what is the DMMU in the district saying about this? That document is supposed to be gotten from UTH since this has been still on UTH. Okay. Uh -huh. We even <coughs> advise that to say use someone who could bet that Kulia to explain. Actually, the officer in charge for traffic, Rusaka, mm -hmm. called me explaining the same procedure. Okay. To say they can help with uh, a patients there to get that document for the relatives so that they have too much of the document who know then they are easily, they can easily access that check. Joseph Siambihi Crown, TV News, Mukoshe. We do take our first set of commercials to join us with more news items after this break. Did I ever tell you how I built this house? You have told us the story a million times. Yes, you used to stay in a small house that used to leak. Your dream was to build yourself a big house. And after graduating as a doctor, you married this beautiful nurse, Grandma. Together, you built your first home with the help of a ZMBS mortgage. And whenever you needed to fix up the house, you got a building materials loan from ZMBS and fixed it up. And that's why I have continued the legacy and opened a ZMBS account so that I, too, can build a house that your kids will call home years to come. And because of my ZMBS savings account, I no longer have to hide my money in these. <laughs> Open a ZNBS account today. With ZNBS, it's possible to build, buy and renovate your dream home. Transact with the Road Transport and Safety Agency RTSA. Visit eservices.gov.zm. Look for Road Transport and Safety Agency in the drop down menu. Select the service you wish to pay for. You will be required to register or log in to your Zampas account for the transaction to proceed. Fill in the required details and use either Zampay or your card to pay. Your document is made available right away. Print on board paper, cut out and stick.
And now, with RTSA's high-tech automated enforcement application, your printed disc can be verified on the spot. The Road Transport and Safety Agency, RTSA. Be road smart. Life is precious. Who also hit this October with Topster for only 160 Quacha Antenna Classic OD Smart? Enjoy thrilling encounters and standout performances in Saudi Pro League with football legends Cristiano Ronaldo, Benzema, and Zambia star Fashun Sakala on Saturday, the 7th of October. Cut Al Hokdad versus Neymar's Al Halai at 17 hours on Sports Premium. Then later dive into the Bundesliga and see Bayern's Henry Ken unpack goals as they host Freiburg on Sunday, the 8th of October at 17:30 hours on Wild Football. That's not all. Tune into the most watch channel novella e plus and stay completely hooked on the romance and horror in the new series love in 40 days every day at 20 40 hours are you a movie fanatic tune into the world of blockbuster movies on Fumebox, st movies zone and st movies plus download the star times own app now for endless entertainment topster enjoy digital life <laughs> Back. Thank you so much for staying with us. The announcement by Finance Minister Stimboko Msokotwane on the removal of customs duty on electric motorcycles, electric vehicles and attendant accessories such as charging systems has excited energy companies. In an interview with Craig Chama, the Suvilo Energy Chief Executive Officer says with the continued escalating cost of living in Zambia, switching to electric vehicles is essential as the green technology revolution is one way of reshaping the transportation and energy consumption of countries around the globe. Details in this report. Petrol and diesel are major factors of production. How expensive the fuel is determines the cost of commodities. This is the case with public and personal vehicles which use petrol or diesel. However, this story of expensive fuel is about to change with government waiving duty on electric vehicles. In other countries, electric motor vehicles are playing a crucial role in addressing environmental challenges associated with traditional diesel and gasoline vehicles. Riding on this, the Zambian government has decided to waive off import duty on all electric vehicles and equipment. I hear of some citizens calling for the reintroduction of subsidies on fuel. If this is adopted, this, of course, means that we must cut expenditure elsewhere in our budget. In practical terms, it may mean that we may have to abandon the policy of free education. As you recall, Madam Speaker, as you recall, Madam Speaker, the previous government, their preference was to subsidize fuel. The fact that there were millions of children failing to go to school because of school fees, that did not matter to them. The focus should be on the most vulnerable. Provide free education to children. Make sure that instead of the time when we used to have one or two teachers in the school, now we have more teachers. This is only possible because we said 
the subsidies on yeah. fuel yeah. must now go and subsidize the most vulnerable. Yeah. 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 Therefore, Madam Speaker, I don't believe that going back to the subsidies for fuel is something that is good for the most vulnerable in our country. Carlos is a Lusaka resident that arrived at the decision to switch to an electric vehicle due to the persistent hike in fuel prices. He now shares his experience. I've been using this car for more than uh, three months. Uh, I'm going to six months now. EV, you do not have to worry about fuel. Yes, all you need to do is just uh, have either at your home or find uh, a public charge station where you can charge from. Yes, once you charge your car, you can uh, drive to any locations, you can go from home to work without ever worrying about the fuel. Yes. So another advantage is uh, low running costs. Yes. Uh, one of the advantages is that it has low running costs and you find that you have little to know in terms of uh, changing the engine oil, the, uh, the, the engine filters, it has none of those because uh, this car runs on an electrical motor. With the continued hike in fuel pump prices, some residents of Lusaka have expressed interest in switching to electric vehicles. However, the lack of efficient knowledge regarding the cars deters them from making the purchase. love to switch to using electrical uh, vehicles because the fuel 